right, hello everyone. Thank you for coming this evening. And welcome to our kickoff for Relay for Life of Westland Wayne for 2023. We're so happy to have you here tonight. Um, we want to have a full, fun evening here. Um, so we want to just start off um, to go through why we do what we do, why we're here um, in this fight together. So we want to have a mission moment um, now of why we do what we do. We're going to have fun with this. <laughs> All right, take it away, Kathleen. The diagnosis is uh, brain cancer. Cole's tumor was about the size of a golf ball. And then when I found out it was stage four, I thought my life was over. I suddenly got the diagnosis of lymphoma. I was scared. I was terrified. I was overwhelmed. And I asked the doctor, you know, was I going to die? That's when my hair started falling out. And it was, it was really hard. What we're trying to do is change the narrative from hopelessness to hope. Hope Lodge is a gift. This makes a difference between life and death for some people. I don't think we would have been able to get this treatment without the Hope Lodge. It was like a hundred bricks being taken off my shoulder. We fund cancer research that involves virtually every type of cancer. The scope and the breadth of our research program will absolutely touch every community. I really do feel passionate that I am going to make a difference. Because of the support system, it makes a huge difference. If I didn't have them, I don't know what I would do. I have a 40% chance of getting cancer again within the next year and a half. Came back, it resurfaced itself, but this time it was larger. I needed a complete stranger to give the gift of life. The American Cancer Society and the research community is incredibly, incredibly in need of people's financial support. We need your help to fund groundbreaking research and vital patient services. We need you because we need to survive. Visit cancer.org to donate and help save lives. All right, so this evening, uh, it is our pleasure to have a special guest with us this evening. Um, I'm going to welcome Dr. Prian. He is with the American Cancer Society. He is a postdoctoral fellow, and he is with the University of Michigan. And he's going to share um, with us this evening what he does and what we do, why it's so important. So let's welcome Dr. Prian. Um, so thanks for the invitation. It's wonderful to be here. It's, it's great to see a lot of uh, students who are here as well. The, what I'll sort of talk about is sort of how I got into this field of work and then what the, the work has actually been um, in, in the area of sort of cancer medicine. So my background is actually more in engineering uh, than anything else. And for most of my early training, what I did was I worked in a field that, that's sort of referred to as microfluidics. And there, what you're basically trying to do is build systems where you can take uh, single cells, single bacterial cells, uh, mammalian cells, and put them into these very small devices so you can study them at a single, uh, sort of single entity level. And so this is sort of what these systems end up looking like. So you have these tiny uh, arrays of cells, basically, and you can, you can do sequencing work, you can study what these cells are doing. And that was sort of where a lot of my work began. But in sort of building the system, uh, the goal was to have sort of a system that acted like a, a droplet computer. So you could take droplets with cells or with, with other reagents, you could combine them, you could separate them, and you could basically do anything you wanted to run chemical, uh, analytical, assays on a chip. And one of the components that we would hope to put into this computer was basically to have a unit that would allow you to bring two droplets together or split two droplets. And a couple of friends and I in the lab tried to do this, and it, it 
the whole experiment sort of failed. Um, we couldn't get these droplets to merge at all in these devices. And we came across some uh, work that had been done by other people suggesting that if you dope these droplets with certain chemicals, positive and negative chemicals, you can get them to, to merge. And so we tried that, but we ended up just getting a whole mess of just uh, stuff in, in the channel, for lack of a better word. And most of this work, the early work, was done by myself and another friend in the lab, Ty. And we were talking about some of this work with another friend in the lab one night, um, Cameron. And what we found that none of us had known about before, that Cameron knew about because his background had been in immunology, was that very recently there was, a, there was some work that was done in Germany showing that uh, neutrophils, which are one of the first cells that show up in an infection site or in a wound, these cells have this strange property where if they're exposed to certain uh, bacterial proteins or certain chemicals, they sort of go through this process of taking all the DNA they have inside them and spitting it out into the extracellular uh, space. And it creates this sort of very sticky, viscous material that uh, traps bacteria and it does other things to mammalian cells that, that it might be exposed to. And the, what we had done previously, all that stuff that was in the channel, was basically made up of DNA and histones from these droplets that were still complexing, even though the droplets themselves weren't merging. And so we started then kind of digging into what this material was. And the material wasn't discovered until about 2004, but everyone in this room is familiar with it as pus. So when you think of pus in wound sites, that's basically the majority of that material is made up of this stuff that comes out of neutrophils. And people started calling this material neutrophil extracellular traps. And it turns out people who study what this material does, they go through this long process of taking neutrophils from the blood, they separate the neutrophils from the other immune cells, the red blood cells, and then they have to stimulate these cells to produce this material, and then that becomes the material they then use to study um, what uh, the neutrophil is actually doing in a given wound site. And these, the material that the neutrophils make is incredibly diverse. So depending on the person you get the neutrophils from, depending on their background state of health, the proteins and the components in those nets can differ widely from person to person. So it's very difficult to sort of perform controlled experiments on this material. And so what we realized we had was we had a system where you just had DNA and histones, so proteins that are normally in the nucleus of a cell, that would complex um, without needing the neutrophil itself. So we could study the material without the cell. And that's what led to us developing sort of this uh, system where you could basically take a, a, a plate, a Petri dish, you could put this material in the Petri dish, you could put cells on top of it and then see what the cells are doing. We did some initial characterization just to see how similar this material was to what the neutrophils themselves were producing. Everything looked um, structurally, chemically very similar. And so then we started exploring it in different disease conditions because now we had this, this material. This material shows up in, in diabetic foot ulcers. It shows up in vaccination sites shows up in wound sites, in blood clots, in tumors, um, and also has, has a role in sort of the overall process of wound healing, so it, it affects stem cells that are found in tissues as well. And so initially, the work that we were doing was kind of all over the place. Um, but what really focused my attention on uh, the interaction between the immune system and tumor biology was right around the time this work was happening, we, my wife and I had just had a daughter, and my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it, it focused sort of my energy, sort of focused sort of the, the work I was doing in two ways. One was just the thought of, of losing someone. And the other was sort of this, I guess being on the research side of it, the recognition that there's a lot of people who came up with the drugs that she was getting, designed the treatment protocols, designed the MRI machines, the CT scanners, everything that she benefited from. So it sort of gave me this real sense of the work that you do in the lab gets out there and it, it has an effect on, on people's lives. So that really focused um, all of the work really that I've done since then. So now to kind of bring it all back to sort of cancer biology, about five years ago, 
people found that there are sort of, so maybe the high level background for this is, there was a, a tumor that naturally occurs in mice that people have been studying for quite a while here at the Michigan Cancer Foundation. And they found when they isolated different uh, parts of this tumor, that if you re-injected some of these tumor cells into new mice that had not had cancer, some of these cells would begin spreading very quickly, whereas others would uh, sort of deform new tumors, but they wouldn't spread from the initial site. So this became a model system about 30 years ago for studying um, differences between uh, tumor cells, even though their background genetics are the same. And very recently, so about four years ago now, people found while looking at this, that if they looked at the metastatic tumors, um, these tumors would form <clears throat> in mice, and neutrophils, so these, what's sort of represented here in blue, neutrophils would sort of rush into these tumors, and these tumors would eventually start to spread. So you would have tumor cells that kind of shed off of the initial tumor, they go to secondary sites in, let's say, the lung, or in the bone marrow or the brain, and then they kind of form new metastatic tumors there. Conversely, the non-metastatic tumors, they still form tumors when you inject those cells into, into mice. Uh, but the tumors that form, they don't spread. They, they remain in place. And all of this now was known going in. What was not known was that you could bypass, you could take these metastatic tumors and basically make them behave like non-metastatic tumors by either blocking neutrophils from going into these tumors or just preventing or degrading uh, the nets, the neutrophil extracellular traps that they were producing in these tumor sites. And that, that was sort of the first time that anyone had shown that the immune system can have a direct in effect on uh, the spread of tumors. And so that became sort of this question that's driven a lot of the work that, that I've been doing since then. And so I, I basically started working with the group that had started these initial experiments, which this, the research team here was split between the University of Michigan and uh, Cold Spring Harbor. And what we did was we took those tumor cells and we put them either in the presence of that material that I described or on just a, a bare petri dish, just bare plastic. And what we found was that the non-metastatic cells had very low levels of expression of chemoattractants that normally bring neutrophils into these tumor sites whereas the metastatic cells had sort of a, a low level that was actually uh, higher than we were expecting for the levels of these chemoattractants that they were producing, even without any uh, external triggers. But when you added the material, they both started behaving more or less the same way. So their, their production of these chemoattractants went up. Um, in theory, in, a, in sort of inside of a mouse, you would expect then that these tumors attract more neutrophils and so that led us to the hypothesis that maybe there's a feedback loop where these tumors, these tumors form, they start attracting neutrophils, um, which are sort of represented in, in green here. And then the neutrophils that come in, they start producing nets. Uh, these nets sort of drive more production of these chemoattractants, so you get more neutrophils coming in. And then that process just continues to grow larger and larger over time. And one of the reasons why we think that this is sort of a, a, a process that's driving metastasis directly is one thing that happens in inflammation sites is if you, if you think of inflammation as something that normally happens in infection, you want immune cells to be able to get to that, uh, that location very easily. So the blood vessels normally become more permeable to allow immune cells to escape and to come into the tissue where there's a, an infection, a viral sort of where there are viral particles, bacterial particles. And so what we, we think, the big picture here is that um, this process is basically driving local inflammation that allows more immune cells to escape, and at the same time allows tumor cells to get into the blood vessel because the blood vessel is now more permeable to cells moving in either direction. And so this has been then the question that we've been chasing now for the last couple of years. Um, and I, I didn't want to make it kind of too data heavy, so this is sort of big picture, especially for like the students who are here. Um, but with that, there's a lot of people who are behind all of this work. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to, to try to address them, but thank you very much for...
you guys come to the to the conclusion of um, <coughs> what chemicals are, and injections would help kind of control the behavior of the cells? So we, what we actually so some of this comes from the early experiments. People found that if you injected chemicals locally that would degrade this material. Oh, sorry. So there's, there's uh, enzymes that the body naturally produces that just go around and they look for DNA that's not inside of a cell. And if they see it, they chew it up. So these are called uh, nucleases. And what people have done with these nucleases is they have attached it to small particles that you can track through like an MRI machine or other way of kind of visualizing where these particles go. And they've looked to see that if you put these particles around tumor sites, does it affect how quickly these tumors spread? And it turns out if you just put the particles in, nothing seems to change. But if you put the particles with that enzyme, then the tumor takes longer to spread or it doesn't spread at all. Um, and it, it differs, right? And not, no tumors are really the same, but you see this in some pancreatic cancers, uh, some breast cancers, some salivary gland cancers. And so it seems like a mechanism that's more general than you might assume, but we don't know uh, what differentiates cells that react to it versus ones that don't. Where does the funding come from your research? So that's, I guess, part of why I'm here. So the, the early part of my work, so the, the microfluidics part of it, was all funded by the NSF. And for anyone who has had students in college who have gone through like grad school looking at research, you know how difficult it is to kind of switch and find a, a, a project area that's different from what you're initially kind of funded to work on. What the ACS grant really allowed me to do was once I saw that this material had some activity in cancer and I started sort of focusing on this as the, the question that I was going to chase, it allowed me to jump and start doing these experiments without needing to go through a process of basically applying for funding independently and then looking for, for someone who would fund that work. Where, where do you physically do your research? You at the University of Michigan. University of Michigan. Yeah, I do have some collaborators at Wayne State, but most of the work is, is done at U of M. How many um, doctors do you have on research projects that are funded by the American Cancer Society? Do you have any idea? I think, I mean, of the ones I know, I think there's at least six or seven out of, uh, out of just the people I've worked with, and this is not counting. So my work has been mostly focused on breast cancer and pancreatic cancer. But there are people in other sort of focus areas that are also funded by the ACS. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. So now, <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> We are going to welcome our very special guest, our mayor, Michael Lando, to come up and share his with us. I thought you might call me up, and so I started typing some notes. So. <laughs> All right. Well, the old saying is you never give a politician a mic because you're not getting it back. But I'll be very brief. Um, I want to just take a minute to introduce myself. For those that don't know me in the room, my name is Michael P. Lando, uh, mayor of City of Westland. Uh, for those that are wondering why is it me and not Mayor Bill Wild. Mayor Bill Wilde stepped down to uh, pursue, or excuse me, retired um, after 16 long years here in the city of Westland. Did a great job, and the city council appointed me to be his successor. Uh, we've hit the ground running. We've done some great things in the few couple, in the few weeks, and uh, we're going to do some really great things here moving forward. But um, did want to just tell you, thank the event leadership team here. Uh, for those that don't know, I was on the event leadership team years ago for Relay for Life, so we won't mention my nickname. <laughs> It's Mayor Mike now, how's that sound? Um, but here in Westland, we've been relaying for over 22 years. Um, I've been fortunate enough to not only participate nearly, or to not only participate every year, but also be on the ELT, as I mentioned. Um, I lost my mother to cancer in 2003, so it's something I've been very passionate about. She got me into it uh, early on, and I've never, never stopped relaying every single year. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to look at my notes here. I wanna make sure I cover all this. While relay is only one day every year, this is a year-round effort. The event leadership team meets, I'm not sure how often you guys meet anymore, is it monthly? Once a month, so 12 times a year or more, 
they meet to go over logistics and strategize for the June event. Um, as mayor, I'm proud of all of you for stepping up to serve. I appreciate all the, the folks that are in the audience. I, I love seeing the kids being involved. I love seeing the kids from Stevenson that are here. Um, you know, yeah, there we go. But not only do, does the ELT team work on logistics and talk about the event, but they do kind of some satellite events. So you'll see some flyers on the table. Get out and support those events because it all supports the Relay for Life event in June uh, and their ultimate goal to raise money for cancer. Um, as mayor, I'm proud of all of you for stepping up and um, I appreciate everybody for doing everything. The city of Westland appreciates you as well. Um, but we always welcome all your ideas. So if you think of something tonight that maybe we're not doing that we can do better, let us know. Uh, not just with the city of Westland, but with Relay for Life. We'd love to hear it. But I'll just close by saying, you know, if you know someone battling cancer, let them know they're not alone. Um, there are many tremendous resources available to get them through this together. Um, we appreciate Dr. Priya for being here. Give, give him another round of applause. They're the ones really on the front lines making sure we can uh, try to fight this disease and, and end it for good. Um, but also spend some time remembering some of the survivors. I won't call people out in the room, but I know a few people in this room that are survivors, and I know their stories, and I know how much it means to them that you guys are all here to fight for them. Um, and also remember all those that we lost to cancer. Um, we actually lost a longtime volunteer yesterday. Um, not sure if everybody knows, Sean Harshaw, he, AKA Wheels. He was in a wheelchair and we just lost him yesterday. So he was a big volunteer for this event. He was part of the Westland area JCs as well. Um, so we're gonna miss him greatly. So thank you all for coming and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, I believe. All right, thank perfect, you. thank you. All right, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. All right, without further ado, I would like to call up the event leadership to come up front so I can introduce everybody. Because it really takes a village to put this <laughs> to, together. So if everyone could come up front here. So yeah, we'll have to get you one. We'll, have to, we'll get the mayor shirt, no problem. All right. <laughs> All right, so as I call your name, just everyone kind of raise your hand and so I can introduce everybody. Um, oh, I should introduce me. I'm Carol Nelius. Sorry. Hi, right. Carol. Hello. <laughs> All right, Debbie Getz. Rhonda Graham, Kathy Graham, Miriam Katie, Jill Lizette Cates, Laura Rhodes, Kathleen Russell, Mary Russell's in this in spirit tonight, and Ashley Tatro. That is your event leadership team. Thank you, thank you, all of you. We're hearing from many of them tonight as well. All right, so we want to do some celebrate, celebrating, I should say, and uh, look back at 2022. Um, we have a lot of celebrating to do. Coming back from this event, you know, after COVID, um, we really jumped into action last year, and we want to celebrate all that. So we want to start off with our individual achievement <laughs> for last year. All right, we're gonna start off with our Grand Club members. These are individuals that raised $1,000 or more. Uh, we have Deborah Willett, Ashley Tatro, Rhonda Graham, Keith Falls, Emma Berriman, AJ Falls, Mark Durr, Kathy Graham, Ashley Willett, and Jackie Perlman. So a round of applause for them. All right. So Gold Club is if you raise $1,500 or more. So Miss Miriam Katie, congratulations. And then next is our All-Star Club if you raise over $2,500. So we have a few people, Martha Burgess, Aniza Waisaki, uh, Katie Sneath, Laura Rhodes, and me, okay. <laughs> All right. And then our next level is platinum, if you raise $5,000 or more. So congratulations to Jill Lizette Cates. So awesome job, everyone. All right. Now, we would like to shout out for our team achievements. We've got a lot of celebrations here. <laughs> 
All right, we have all of our teams we want to mention because we couldn't can do this without our teams, every, each and every one of them. So we have hashtag Team Liam, um, All Star Patriots Dance, um, Avon Westland, Best Buy, Dairy Queen Westland, Family and Friends for Life, Forever Friends, Heart and Soul, Kathy's Cancer Kick and Crew, PSCU Helping Hands, the AP team, that's the Allen Park team, uh, Ready for a Cure, uh, team Steve Smith, the Stevenson Middle School Honor Society, Team Bry Guy, the Calm Before the Squall, the Dance Academy, the Knights of the Columbus, and Too Tired to, Too Inspired to Be Tired, I always get that wrong, and Wild Walkers. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> All of our teams. And then these are their accomplishments. So rising star is if you raise $1,000 or more. And we had two teams, the Dance Academy and Dairy Queen of Westland. Right. Next is our bronze teams. They raised $2,500 or more. So Kathy's Cancer Kick and Crew, Family and Friends for Life, Too Inspired to be Tired, and Forever Friends. The next is our silver teams. They raised $3,500 or more. It, three teams, Heart and Soul, The Calm Before the Squall, and Stevenson Middle School Honor Society. All right, next is our gold team, and that is PSCU. It was our $5,000 team. And then... Dun, da, da. We have Jade, which is you raise $10,000 or more. So Avon Westland, so 10,000. All right, we're excited. So congratulations to all of them. We have fun graphics tonight. Yes. <laughs> all right, then we have a couple fun awards we wanted to share. Um, we always do at the end of um, every relay, we kind of just do just vote some fun awards for our teams that participated. So our first one was our Rookie team of the year, that's just when it's your first year and you really, you really stepped it up and we took notice. So that goes to the calm before the squall. For that. <laughs> and then the next one was the best decorated campsite and that went to Team Best Buy. <laughs> and then our most spirited team went to Stevenson Middle School Honor Society. <laughs> Right. Awesome. We are very proud. So congratulations, everyone. We're very proud of all of you. Um, the next area, I'm going to call up Miriam, Miriam Katie and Jill Lizette Cates, and they're going to go through our 2022 sponsors, because we have a lot of them. You'll see. So come on up. Thank you, Carol. So sponsors do a lot for us. They give us money to help us promote our event, and a lot of them do donations, and we want to thank all of them. So to get us started, we have the Garden City Pizza Cafe, PSCU, Meyer, Auto One of Garden City, Burgess Bookkeeping and Tax Center, Ute Funeral Home, Rick's Custom Cycle, Tri-City Builders, Arnold Electric, Community Financial Credit Union, Smoller Smiles Family Dentistry, the Katie Family, the City of Westland, Mayor Racy and Wayne City Council. My turn now. Thank you again. I'm uh, reiterating what Jill said uh, for all of our sponsors. Uh, and then now we continue the list with the Westland Professional Firefighters Local 1279. Westland Police Officers Association, Westland City Council President James Hart, Westland City Council Mike McDermott, Westland City Council Melissa Sampy, Westland Police Lieutenants and Sergeants Association, Westland Fire Administration Public Awareness Committee, U-Haul, Streetside Burger, Wayne Firefighters, Heartland Marketplace, Dairy Queen Westland. 
in Jonah's Market, Texas Roadhouse, Linda Bayline, Bolin, Juniman Insurance Agency, Bedoin Insurance Agency, Web Centric Communications, S&B Party and Tent Rentals, Metro Bolt and Fastener, Knights of Columbus 3021 Notre Dame Council, and Black Anvil Construction Supplies, Archer 2 Salon, Imperial Press, Tammy Bishop Pampered Chef Consultant, Sports Venue, On the Border Westland, WLND, Sherry Weatherby Frost. Thank you again, once again, from myself and Jill and all of our uh, lead team. Thank you so much for our 2022 sponsors. All right, so the next important question is, how much money did we raise in 2022? And here is our total, $51,164. And we want to point out, our goal was $25,000, and we doubled that. So that's something really to be proud of, of everyone stepping up in our community um, for us to surpass this goal. So we couldn't have done it with all of you. So thank you, thank you. A round of applause to everyone. All right, right now, we want to reveal what our theme is for 2023. And you might have a little hints. Little hints. <laughs> All right. And here we are. Da -da -da. Kind of annoying your centerpieces. So lights, camera, and cure. It's life on the purple carpet. So yeah, there's so much we can do with that theme. So we're really excited the little teasers with their centerpieces on the table tonight. So that Miss Kathleen made. She is our artist here. So thank you, Kathleen. All right. So we're kicking things off already strong. Um, and we already have 17 teams, that's a mouthful, um, registered. So we're very, very excited about that. So here's all of our teams up there right now. So we have Avon Westland, Let There Be Light, The Dance Academy, Dairy Queen Westland, Hashtag Team Liam, Eclipse Dance Collective, The Knights of Columbus, Best Buy Westland, Forever Friends, Too Inspired to Be Tired, Heart and Soul, Wild Walkers, Family and Friends for Life, Kathy's Cancer Kicking Crew, The Calm Before the Squall, PSCU Helping Hands HP Team, and Stevenson Middle School Honor Society. So thank you for all those. So that's just starting. We want to definitely hit more than that. Um, as we're kicking off here, we're, I'm hoping to steer our goal for 25 teams, and I think we can do that. Um, we're, next, we're going to hit our sponsors. So I'm going to ask Jill to introduce um, our, for our sponsors. So far for 2023, we have three sponsors, Avon Westland, Burgess Bookkeeping and Tax Center, and Garden City Cafe, who for the second year in the row will be donating all the food for our survivors' luncheon. So we want to thank them. And also remind any of you, if you know any businesses that aren't listed on our list from last year that you think might be interested in sponsoring our event, that you reach out to them. You can reach out to any of our ELT teams or ELT members, and we will be happy to help you in that process of securing a sponsor. Thank you. All right. I'm going to have Rhonda Graham come up right now, and she's going to talk about ACS CAN and what that is and why we need all of your support for it. So here's just a few facts about the Michigan Cancer Action Center mission. So if you just want to read through those, and then um, I'll give you a little bit more information about what ACS CAN and what we can do to help. 
I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Hi, my name is Bill, and I'm here to talk to you about the importance of joining your American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, or ACSCAN, as some of them like to call it. But really what it is, is it's an opportunity to join your voice with lots of other relayers around the nation so you can add your voice and we can get public policy laws made in your states and in, in Washington. Right now it's really important because there's a lot of me sitting around on Capitol steps waiting and waiting to be passed for cancer patients. So for a $10 or more yearly membership, you can join your voice with all of the relayers all over the nation and you can learn how to become an advocate like all those wonderful other relayers. If you would like more information, please see the slides that will be shown later. Thank you. I hope you join. Bye. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill. But how I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill. Now you're a law. Oh, yes. Who remembers that? That. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a catchy little tune. So here's just a little bit more information. These are things that um, we here in the state of Michigan are fighting for too. So that makes it really exciting that we're pushing for some of the same things that, you know, across the world is fighting for, so. So hello. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Rhonda Graham, and I am the ACS CAN chairperson. And I am so excited to be here today to talk with all of you about using your voice to fight cancer. And how, when we use our voices together, we are better. How many of you have, before today, have heard of American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, or ACS CAN? Raise your hand. How about if you clap for me? Let's get a little noise in this room. <laughs> Wonderful. Sounds like a number of you um, know the ACS Can and the American Cancer Society work closely together. Of course, it will be really incredible if one day when I ask that question, everyone in this room claps. It means we are being heard and that that is why we relay. So here is a quick overview, well, maybe not quick, but of ACS CAN is, um, sorry, ACS CAN is the nation's leading cancer advocacy organization that is working every single day to make cancer uh, issues national priority. Many of, uh, many of the most important decisions about cancer are made outside of our doctor's offices. Instead, they are made by our state legislature, in Congress, and at the White House. We encourage all relayers to become ACS Chem because membership empowers us as regular people to be part of the growing national movement that is fighting back against cancer. Together, we are able to hold lawmakers accountable for their words and their actions. We are able to demand that our leaders not only talk about fighting cancer, but take real steps towards decreasing the number of people suffering and dying from cancer. ACS Ken is a nonpartisan advocacy organization. We're nonpartisan because when a patient is diagnosed and battling cancer, the doctor doesn't stop to ask if you're Democrat or Republican. Cancer impacts every one of us. I'm sure all of you in this room have a personal story to tell about how it has impacted your life. 
It is so important that you tell your story. You see, a hundred years ago, the word cancer was not spoken. And we lost nearly every cancer patient to the, with this disease. We now know that cancer thrives on silence and complacency. Progress comes when we speak out, when we make noise. When you become a member of ACS Ken, you are bringing your voice to the fight. But why is that important? Why should we make our voices heard? Well, through Relay for Life, we all work hard to raise dollars for research to find a cure, right? Every year, ACS, American Cancer Society, contributes hundreds of millions of dollars to fund research. That's right, there's a direct result of each one of yours and so many others' efforts. That is freaking amazing. We should all be so proud of ourselves for doing this. Then in addition to ACS research funding, the federal government con uh, contributes an astounding $5 billion towards cancer research. Yes, the American government donated over 30 times the amount that we can do. They are the number one funder of cancer research in the country. But I might have missed the line in my speech, hang on. But they didn't just decide to be do-gooders do on their own. They did it because they heard from the advocates the cancer research funding needed to be a priority. They did it because the power of our ACS Ken members' voices. ACS Ken volunteers met with our members of Congress and asked them to make cancer a national priority and fund cancer research. That $5 billion likely wouldn't have happened if we didn't use our voices. Because of the amazing successes we have seen in cancer research, we now see a growing number of cancer patients who are living longer and surviving. As relayers, we work so hard to raise money for cancer research so survivors can walk another lap around the track with us. But we can't do it alone. We need the federal government to keep doing their part to fund cancer research too. And they need to hear you tell them why. Together, we can take this next lap with our survivors. We can collectively use our voices together so their stories, their voices, our voices are all heard. Now bear with me while I uh, take a minute to just demonstrate the power of our voices and the even better, or, or the power of your voice and the even better power of all of our voices. Now, let's imagine our clapping as if they're gonna be voices. Now, would all of my ACS CAN members clap with me? Anyone who's already an ACS CAN member? Now, will all of you amazing survivors out there clap with me? Keep clapping, everyone. Now, all you amazing and, and selfless caregivers, please clap with me. Now, everyone who isn't already clapping, please clap with me. Can you hear that sound? Can you hear how loud it gets? Now, what do you hear? The clapping of our hands represents the power of our voices together. The silence represents those who don't use their voices, those who won't make a difference. The silence represents the voices that aren't heard. I am a member of ACS Ken because I know my voice can make a difference in our fight. Remember, we are better together, my friends. So now on the tables, there's ACS Ken forms. Just 
I was like, what was that? <laughs> so on the table, there's ACS chem forms, and there's also um, um, a pamphlet that has a QR code on the bottom. So if you're willing to donate today, on the bottom of that one piece of paper, you can scan the QR with your, with your, um, with your phone. So with ACS Ken, it's a $10 annual membership. If you donate $25 or more, American Cancer Society will send you a cute little uh, window clean this year. So go ahead, pull out your checkbooks, pull out your wallets. Let's make some donations and help with research and making all of our voices heard. Also, by being an ACS Chem member, when you sign up and use your email, you will also get things that are going on in our state as well as across the country. So it's really cool to keep track of when they're working on, you know, trying to get more funding to help with tobacco issues because, you know, they went from tobacco issues to e-cigarettes to vaping to, and it, it allows our voices to be heard that we find this, you know, we need money to help us um, not, you know, promote this to our, our youth and, uh, you know, help save people's lives. So we'll give you a couple of minutes if you want to fill those out. You Let me entertain you. Ms. I have a question. I have an answer. What happens if a team gets 10 ACS CAN members? They become an ACS CAN um, team. And then, you, well, in the past, we, we were able to get signs. I don't know. Are we going to be able to do that? In the past, if you got each team got, or whichever team's got 10 or more members to sign up, then at your campsite on Relay Day, we'll have something to acknowledge your team as being an ACS CAN um, team. And the reason we do this differently than, you know, just what we do in our walk is because this funding is completely different than the funding that we raise during our relay days. Yeah, that does help in our research, but this gets our voices heard. This gets us to Congress. This gets our legislature knowing that we're out here working and we're fighting and we want them to know this needs to be a national priority across our country. Yes. Why do we want all the teams to join? Because it's awesome to know that we all have our voices heard. Um, you're going to get with your email, you're going to get things where it's going to say, let, let Governor Whitmer know that you're against this. And there's a place that you can sign and submit it. And government, Governor Whitmer is going to see more people standing up for, we need more funding in the state of Michigan. Yes. Well, that's question. But if our event gets a special number, we get something special too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For 40. Oh, if we get 40. Yeah, if we get 40 total. Then we're in ACS Yeah. And then we're, you know, like on a national level. So we, uh, yeah. Yes. And on March 15th, some of us are going to Lansing on National ACS CAN Day. Lobby Day. Yep. Yep. All right. Do we need a couple more minutes? Everyone got their pocketbooks out? All right. We'd like to have all of our survivors stand up or raise your hand if you, if you can't stand up. Let's give all of our survivors a great big round of applause. We all want you to know that you are our heart and soul of why we relay. Please take a carnation and a keychain. The carnation symbolizes how much our lives bloom because we fight the fight alongside each and every one of you.
All right, now I'd like to invite Ashley up for a few words. I'm new, I'm nervous, so this is gonna be like so quick. Um, I'm Ashley, I'm the new team engagement lead for the ELT, so my whole job is to put the fun back in fundraising for all of our um, relayers and participants. So the first way we're gonna do that is if everybody shows up to the team meetings, because we're gonna have a lot of cool stuff going on, I've got prizes for people and everything, we're gonna do things a little bit different, and then, um, if you need help, I've got booklets that we're gonna be giving out to you guys, and you can contact like any one of the ELT members, and we will help you wherever you can. So, we're gonna show up. <laughs> okay. And let me introduce Jill. <laughs> Thank you. So again, my name is Jill Lazat Cates, and I am the in charge of fundraising or helping to help everybody with fundraising. So we already have had some successful fundraising events that we started off with Pizza Palooza back in November, and thank you to all of you who participated in that. And then we had a couple other teams do some individual fundraising as well. But we have a big fundraiser that's going to be on Saturday with Kathy's Cancer Kick and Crew. And it is the comedy fundraiser, and that'll be Saturday at Joy Manor. And I believe they have some tickets over here, because if you get them tonight, they're a few dollars less expensive than they will be if you wait and get them at the door on Saturday. There will be raffles, 50-50 tickets, and a lot of fun at the comedy show. So if you're not doing anything, it'd be a great early Valentine event to take your uh, date, night. date for that. So stop and see them before you leave if you want to get some tickets. <laughs> yeah, Rhonda's going to get up there too. All right, our next fundraiser, we have um, Too Inspired to be Tired is doing the Little Caesars Pizza Kits. So that is running through March 5th. And all of these flyers that I'll be talking about, most of them will be on that back table. So you can grab those on your way out for the um, fundraisers that you're interested in. Our next fundraiser, of course, is Team Avon. Um, we're offering through February and March 20% of anything that you order will go back to your fundraising. So if you shop with us at the link provided or contact me directly, that money will go to your relay. We will be doing this throughout the remaining of relay, but Avon is switching over their direct links as we speak. So there will be a new link for everything after February and March. But that is up there. And then we have um, another bowling fundraiser by team Let There Be Light. Sunday, March 19th, and that's at Oak Lanes, and we have flyers for that. So if you're a bowler and you're interested in that, then on May 19th, this is an all-relay fundraiser. It's Karaoke for Life, and this we did last year for the first time, and we raised over $1,500, and if you help us out with that, um, you will share in the money that we raise. We do a 50-50 event. We'll also be having auction baskets, so each team will be invited to donate up to two auction baskets for this event, and you will get the money raised from your auction basket that you donate, and that will be on Friday, May 19th, at the Notre Dame KSC right on Wayne Road in Wayne just between Glenwood and Michigan Avenue. Our next fundraiser is our Texas Roadhouse Dine to Donate. In this fundraiser, we also are able to set up outside, we'll have a tent and do a bake sale. And that's where we're gonna make the majority of our money. 
So any baked goods that you or your team donate, you will actually earn the money back from those baked goods when they sell. So we'll be having sign-up sheets for the bake sale and the auction prizes at our April, March and April meetings, and for this one also for May. So you'll be able to do that. We have um, the mini golf. It's putt for a cure. That will be Saturday, June 24th. We've changed it. Last year we did it during the day. We're going to do this one from 5 to 9 p.m. We will have pre-sale tickets. If you want just a game, it's $7. However, if you want the package deal, which is a game of mini golf, a hot dog, chips, and a drink, it's $12. Or you can get a family four pack for $44. And then our next fundraiser is Relay Weekend. Mark Deere and his team at Westland Dairy Queen, last year they did Roundup for Relay, where if you go in and spend $4.92 and you round it up to five, that eight cents would go to Relay, but they also donate 15% of all their sales, no flyer needed, for that weekend to Relay for Life. They will be in their new location this year, which is next to Tommy's Car Wash, and they're slated to open there within the next four to six weeks. And then they're also good buddies with the Tommy's Car Wash, and we're hoping, crossing our fingers, that they're going to join in and do the same promotion with the Roundup and the 15%. But we will let you know on that. A couple other fundraisers that we... Um, just got the flyers tonight, is Relay for Life Bottle and Can Drive. And that's um, the calm before the squall. So they're taking bottle and can donations. If you know anybody that um, may be senior citizens and they don't take them back and they just want to donate them to the cause, their team would be happy to take them. Now, one of our other fundraisers, and we don't necessarily think of it as a fundraiser because it's an event at Relay for Life is our luminarias. So I created a flyer to dedicate a luminaria. Those sell for $10. And if you take these, anybody who wants to create the luminaria bags, we will at our meetings have bags. You can sell the luminarias for $10. And then we decorate the track with those at the actual relay. But if you sell those luminarias and put them in on your um, relay page under the luminaria, you get credit for that $10 for each luminaria that is sold. So take a couple flyers for that. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're also working on some fundraisers that were not finalized yet. We're looking to do a golf outing, like on a real golf course, not the mini kind. So we're working on that. We've um, contacted a few golf courses already, and we're compiling the information. We're also looking to redo our Dine to Donate at On the Border. We did that the Monday after Relay last year, and we're looking at choosing that same date if it's still available. And then a couple other ideas that you might think of, if you work in an office building where you have to dress up, perhaps having a dress casually day, or if you, they're not going to let you do that, maybe a dress purple day for relay. And then everybody pays 5 or $10, whatever you and your boss can decide on, so that you can raise money for relay. Something as well is um, you can buy these stickers that say, I dressed in support of Relay for Life through Oriental Trading. I have a roll of them that I got before. And also canisters, the ones that Relay is putting out now, the money canisters to collect money, they're not as nice as they had been in the past. So we're going to ask you if you get like maybe one of these canisters or the stacks chips canisters, if you collect them and bring them in or 
if you want to decorate your own canister to collect funds. You, you can buy the rolls of stickers. There's all kinds of stickers and everything on Oriental Trading for Relay for Life. You can decorate your own canisters. Or if you have a Cricut machine, you can do that. Or just paint something, whatever, to make it fancy and eye-catching for your Relay for Life fundraising. That's another idea that you can do. Now, one of the biggest fundraisers that I know works great for me is having a Facebook fundraiser. So if you have not yet attached your registration for Relay to the Facebook fundraiser, you will want to do that because then you can also have the fundraising app. In both of these, you can just carry right in the palm of your hand and anytime somebody says, oh, I want to donate, but I don't have any money. Oh, that's OK. I have my phone here. Do you have a debit or credit card? And you can take that donation right on the spot and put that in on your phone. So if you need help with either of those, any of our ELT team would be happy to help you with putting the fundraising app or helping you set up your Facebook fundraiser on your phone so that you can raise even more money. Thank you so much. OK, we'll wrap things up here. Um, notice on the screen you'll have our upcoming meetings, um, just one a month, we all are asking for. And you have these lovely cards on your table, little business cards. If you flip them over, it has the meeting dates on them. So you can keep them in your purse, your wallet, or put them on your fridge, whatever works for you. If you need extra from your friends, grab them. You can, um, there's more on the tables. Um, all of those, uh, three of the meetings are at St. Mary Cause of Our Joy Church in Westland, right next to Value City Furniture, if you haven't been there before. Um, and then the final meeting will be at Tatton Park. It's kind of our logistics night. So you know your campsites and how the, the day is going to flow. So um, just keep that in mind. If you can't come, I mean, the whole team can come. If someone, it, it doesn't matter. Bring everybody. Send someone from your team every month. It's real important so you get the information um, you know, that you need. And, then, um, it, and it's so important that you're there. So you can bring many. You can bring one. Bring, bring, you can bring the whole NHS Honor Society. Bring everybody. We would love to see all of you. So, all right. And final thing, uh, slide here. We just want to thank everyone um, from Mayor Wild, um, from Mayor Londo, um, the Westland City staff, WLND, who's always here for us um, every step of the way, the Wayne Westland community. It's so important. Um, we couldn't do this without everyone together. Um, and we want to note, our, so our event is June 10th, but I don't know if anyone caught on yet on the table or up here. We, took a, we did a survey and we made a change this year from after all these years of a little bit later, we are switching our event after feedback for our teams. Uh, to this year we're going to try a 13 hour event. We're going to be 11 a.m. to midnight this year. Um, so just make note of the time change, not till 7 a.m. So this year, 11 a.m. to midnight, same wonderful location. So same, all the great events, silent auction and luminaria um, and survivor luncheon and still activities and, and um, games and themes and you name it. So I um, just wanted to make sure everyone knew that. So Westland City Park and da da da, one more. We just want to say thank you to all of you for coming tonight. We appreciate your support, and we see you in March, all of you. If you have any questions tonight, please see any of us, um, leadership team. Thank you again very much for coming.